All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, who says in his glorious book, Say, My Lord has guided me to a straight path, an upright religion, the faith of Abraham, a, a man of pure faith. He was not a polytheist. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and that our master prophet Muhammad is his votary and messenger, who said, My Lord has taught me good manners, and he has taught me in the best way. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his household, companions, and upon those who follow their path till the day of judgment. Islam has come with an integrated approach that regulates man's relationship with his Lord, other people, and the whole universe. The Islamic Sharia is rich with many etiquettes and good manners that contribute to the progress and prosperity of the society. These manners include the etiquettes of seeking permission to enter a place. Islam has ordered us to seek a permission making this etiquette a means to protect people's privacy. As the Almighty Allah says, O oh, believers, do not enter other people's houses until you have asked permission to do so and greeted those inside. That's best for you. The Prophet taught us that the etiquette of seeking permission includes starting with salutation and mentioning your name. It is recorded that a man asked the Prophet's permission to enter the house. When he was in the house, he said, May I, may I enter? The Prophet, peace be upon him, said to his servant, Go out to this man and teach him how to ask for permission to enter a house. And tell him to say, Peace be upon you, may I enter? The man heard it and said, Peace be upon you, may I enter? The Prophet permitted him and he entered. Also Jabir narrated, Once I sought the permission to enter upon the Prophet, peace be upon him. So he said, Who is this? I said, Me. The Prophet replied, Me. It seemed that he disliked the answer. Also, it is advised when seeking permission to lower one's gaze and not to look inside the house. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Seeking permission to enter somebody's house has been prescribed in order to restrain the eyes. Also, Sa'd ibn Ubada narrated that once he sought the permission to enter a house while he was standing in front of the door. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, said to him, When you seek permission to enter a house, do not stand in front of the door. It is reported that whenever the Prophet wanted to seek a permission to enter a house, he would not stand right in front of the door. Rather, he would stand to the right or the left side of the door. Also, Islam taught us that there are etiquettes that must be followed in the streets. The Prophet said, Avoid sitting by the roadsides. The, the people then said, O oh Allah's Messenger, we cannot do without these meetings in which we converse. So he said, if you have to sit at all, then fulfill the root its due rights. They asked, What are the root's due rights? He replied, Keep an eye downward so that you may not stare at the woman. Refraining from doing harm to the other and exchanging mutual greetings, and commanding the good and forbidding the evil. Also, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Faith has over 70 branches, or over 60 branches the uppermost of which is the declaration that no one has the right to be worshipped but Allah, and the least of which is the removal of harmful objects from the road, and modesty is a branch of faith. Thus, one who uses the road or public facilities should not speak or laugh loudly, annoys others or throw rubbish in the streets. Also, another good manner is cleanliness. Islam made cleanliness and purification of the body, clothes, and places, and places an integral part of its rulings. This is why Islam urged people to adopt a number of etiquettes that keep one's appearance good and pleasing. Allah praised those who keep themselves clean, saying, God loves those who turn to Him, and He loves those who keep themselves clean. Also, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Indeed, Allah is good, and He loves what's good and he is clean and he loves cleanliness. He also said, purity is half of faith. Once, the Prophet saw a disheveled man whose hair was untidy. He said, could this man not find something to tidy his hair? He saw another man wearing dirty clothes. 
and said, could this man not find something to wash his, to wash his garments with? The Prophet peace be upon him also urged people to clean their teeth in order to keep a good smell of their mouths and not to harm others. He said, had I not thought it difficult for my followers, I would have commanded them to use siwak, that's tooth stick, before every prayer. The good manners also include the etiquettes of dialogue. Dialogue is one of the, me of the means for developing acquaintance with others and correcting concepts. Islam has opened the doors to dialogue among all people as a way to reach the truth without any restriction or coercion. However, such a dialogue should not involve taunting or mocking the others. The Almighty Allah said, and argue with them in the best manner, and said, O Prophet, tell my servants to say what's best. Also the Prophet said, a true believer does not taunt, curse, or abuse, or talk indecently. The good manners also include ascertaining the authenticity of any news. Allah said, O oh, believers, if a troublemaker brings you news, check it first, lest you wrong others unwittingly and later regret what you have done. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, It is enough sin for a man to relate everything he hears. This includes avoiding, avoidance of telling rumors or spreading them. Allah said, And you say with your mouth things you didn't know to be true thinking it was trivial, but, but to God it was very serious. The Prophet said, He who believes in Allah and the last day, let him speak good or remain silent. Lowering the voice is also one of the general etiquettes laid down by Islam. It means that man should not raise his voice beyond what's usual, especially in the presence of those who are of a higher position. The Quran records Luqman's piece of advice to his son. Luqman said, And be moderate in your pace and lower your voice. Indeed, the most disagreeable of sounds is the, vo is the voice of donkeys. Allah the Almighty also praised those who lower their voices, especially in the Prophet's presence. He said, Indeed, those who lower their voices before the Messenger of Allah they are the ones whose hearts Allah has tested for righteousness. For them is forgiveness and great reward. Guiding the lost is also one of these etiquettes. It means to guide a lost person to the right direction through description or sending someone along to guide him. Prophet Muhammad declared, declared that guiding the lost is a duty. With that said, I ask Allah for forgiveness for me and for you. All praise is due to Allah, Lord of all worlds. I, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. I bear witness that our master, Prophet Muhammad, is his votary and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his family, companions, and whoever follows his guidance to the day of judgment. Muslim brothers, there are other etiquettes and manners that Muslims should adhere to including helping the needy, which is considered as one of the most sublime deeds in Islam. Abu Dhar, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Messenger of Allah said, In the morning, charity is due from every boon in the body of every one of you. The companions replied, How can we bring forth this much of charity, O Messenger of Allah? He said, The doors to goodness are plenty, including the glorification of Allah, praising him by saying, Allah is great, there is no God deserving to be worshipped but Allah, enjoining good, forbidding evil, removing harm from the root, conveying the message to the deaf, guiding the blind, helping people with their needs, exerting your utmost with those in dire need, and giving aid to the weak as much as you can. All of these are acts of charity for yourself. The list of etiquettes and good manners also include giving hand to the weak and those of special needs. It is a means for achieving social integration. Allah the Almighty is near to those people with broken hearts and shows mercy to those who are merciful to his slaves. Which is why a Muslim should not be little any good deed even if it is a good word. The Prophet said, 
do not consider any act of goodness as being insignificant, even if it is meeting your brother with a cheerful face. And he also said, you gain no victory or livelihood except through the blessings and invo an invocation of the poor among these two. The last in question further includes showing respect to the elder, a point which is realized through dignifying them and not showing disrespect for them. Since old age and precedence to Islam should not be, ta should, should be taken into account, the elder should, on his part, be merciful and compassionate to the young. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, If a Muslim respects an old man, Allah will provide him with, th with someone who shows respect to him when he gets old. This actually shows how Islam is merciful, tolerant, and just. To the extent that the Prophet, peace be upon him, stated clearly that showing respect to the elders and memorizers of the Quran and fair rulers are different forms of glorifying Allah. The Prophet peace be upon him also said, He is not one of us who does not have mercy on our young, respect our elders, and command good and forbid evil. In Islam, <clears throat> in Islam showing respect is not confined only to Muslims of old age, for it has been narrated that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him gave charity to a Jewish family. Also, Omar ibn Abdul Aziz is reported to have written to his governor in Basra saying, search for the old, weak, and poor from among the people with whom we have covenants, and give them out from the Muslim house of treasury what meets their needs. Society's members should take care of its general interests. This is one of their duties. If we take the issue of overpopulation as an example, we have to highlight two points. First, some people look at their financial ability only, not paying attention to the practical and educational consideration. It is not only the individual's ability that shall be considered, rather it goes far beyond that to the capabilities of the country that shoulder the responsibility of providing services that cannot be provided by the individuals which means that the situation and capability of the state is one of the most important factors that should be taken into consideration as far as population is concerned. In fact, uncontrolled overpopulation leaves a negative impact not only on the individuals or the family, but also on those countries that do not consider the findings of science in addressing the problem of overpopulation. Second, Few but strong people are better than many but, meek but weak people. That's because the uncontrolled population may, may result in extraordinary conditions that in turn hinder some countries from providing the basics of health, education, and infrastructure. Also, in case lump, large numbers of people do not cause but weakness, ignorance, backwardness, and burden on the state, they become of no value as described by the Prophet, peace be upon him.